Corcus comes with its own templating engine, Qt, that can be used to render HTML or anything else in your web application. And right now it's still experimental, but it already includes a lot of features. And I want to show you how to use it in our web application. I have an example application here, my playground that uses a Quarkus in version 1.3.1. And I include this dependency, rest easy, cute, to include the templating engine, including some uh, JAXRS support, because I think it makes a lot of sense for enterprise applications to use action-based MVC to use our routing from a REST controller and then forward to the templating engine. And you will see that this is um, done quite easily if we write a RESTful web service, if you write a REST resource, for example, entries resource. So what I will do, I will write a JAX REST resource for something like blog post entries. So this is going to be an application scoped bean and a JAX REST path for entries. So this will emit something for HTTP GET request to entries. And in my case, I want to emit, well, a rendered page for entries where all of my blog posts are listed, for example. So what I will do, I will have a method that in this case returns what is called a template instance. So that is integrated with JAXRS. I can return this for, uh, from this method. And then I say something like entries. And then I can return, well, an instance of a template and how that works. I can inject something here using resource path and I point to a template. I will call this later index.html. And then that is um, a template here that I call index template. And I can use this. So actually what it does, it integrates with the templating engine. I could directly uh, use this as well. But here the integration already works that my JAXRS method can just return this type. And then I can say something like, index template um, instance, for example, or data, where I already include some Hello World data. And now I can forward this to, well, a template. And per default, these templates reside under resources, templates, templates, and then my index.html. So then I don't have to configure anything. That is just the default that will be taken. And I take an HTML5 template here, and then I say, well, document or in this case entries and then I already output my hello world. So I say this is going to be my hello world resource. And then what I can do, I can try this out already. So what I will do, um, you probably already assumed this, I use Quarkus Dev in a development mode. So the nice story is it integrates with my templates here and this development mode will also reload when I change something here in the HTML code. So this is quite nice for the development experience that's also uh, included here. And once that is up and running, I can uh, try this out, out using curl, for example, or using my browser. So in this case, um, I can go to localhost slash entries and then, well, that works. So that is quite boring still. So what I want to do, of course, I want to take my blog post entries and emit them here. So I can inject a bean that I already created that I call entry, entry store. And then I can use this entry store to take some entries here. For example, I say entry store, get entries, which returns a list of entries. And that is also supported. Um, collections and maps are supported here. So I can use that and have a look. This is just an example that creates some example entries here. And then I can use this in my template. So this will forward this in the same way like I did for the hello. And then I can something like say like we have entries size entries in our application. So we can do that. And then in the same scheme, like we always can just quickly uh, reload Quarkus applications, we see that now we have three entries here. All right, then what's a little bit more interesting is if we loop over these entries, actually, and there are some sections available, for example, there's a for construct where we say for entry in entries. So this will loop over this for here. And then we just say, well, just emit entry. And let's have a look what the entry actually is. Let's have a look at our data class. So this is supposed to be a domain um, entity. 
In my case, just for the sake of the example, to make it simpler, all of these fields are public. It also works if they have getters and setters, and then automatically um, the getter is being used, even if I just say entry.title, for example. So in my case, I just emit all of these entries uh, then. And here, for example, assume I say, I want this to be a list, and then I include this here in an HTML list. All right. Then I can just try this out and then I see uh, the list of my entries that I have in my example application. And also what's quite helpful, so there are a few constru uh, constructs available. This is a for section where I can just have a for loop. I also can say each. You can have a look at the reference um, uh, page here, what all of that is um, included, all of these uh, syntaxes. So it's quite powerful already. So for example, I can use some metadata. For example, a count is available so I can count uh, the the individual um, entries so count is like an index but starting with one index is also available or I have um, some means similar to an iterator available for example has next and then it tells me well if you still have another one uh, then just say or um, except the last one so you might assume or if you have done things like that already in the past, then you know that this can be quite helpful. And assuming we now want to have also uh, something like a link, where we just want to uh, link to entries. So in a second, I will write a second page where we can have a look at individual entries. And then in this case, that's supposed to be entry title. And this is supposed to be entry link. So that works as well. And then I can already uh, include some links here that link to a page that I also now want to include. So that is my first page, just the index page. And now I want to have a detailed page just for the individual entries. Let's write a second one. I will write another get method. So uh, remember that is done by JAXRS. This will be forwarded. So I write another method that is um, done here for a single entry. And if we want to be a little bit more explicit with these two methods, what we can also do, we can just say, well, by the way, this should explicitly produce media type, um, not this one, media type HTML, text HTML. And if you know about content negotiation, we can use these features uh, in JAXRS. So this works very well. And then say, okay, public. Again, we have a template instance here for a single entry. And now you assume that well, this is a path parameter called entry, where this is the entry name, which we also will look up from our entry store, this time for an individual entry. And then we say, well, this is going to be an entry um, where we just return this as well from well a different template. Now we will include a template for um, a single entry here that we call, let's call this entry.html. And this is going to be the entry template. And then this entry template will be rendered for our entry, but only if that also exists. So what we can do if we say, well, in this case, if the entry is null, then we want to th uh, throw, we can throw, for example, a not found exception. That is a JAXRS exception. And this works since this is a JAXRS method. So we can do this. And then this will be forwarded to our entry HTML template, which I will now create so this is our html this is our second template for a single entry page in our case so this is going to be an entry title already the title of the page will be the entry title and then we say well in this case we also want the entry title to be here and then let's say we also want uh well maybe a paragraph with the abstract content. Again, we ha can have a look at the entry, uh, the individual which information we have available here. And then we can emit this also for um, a single entry. So for example, if we go to a single entry, then we see um, this result here. What is also interesting per default, um, HTML uh, characters will be um, encoded. So we see that uh, we have some HTML tags here in my example. So an entry store, uh, this includes uh, strong tags. So what it's done out of the uh, out of the box, this will just um, encode all of these characters 
unless I say dot raw, then there's a raw access to my uh, to this variable to this content, and then I can also render it depending what I need here, of course, for my data. Um, so this is quite um, uh, helpful already uh, to to build all of these. And what I can also do, and this is now a really cool feature, I think. I can write something what is called a template extension. So assuming I have a date in my entry, and I do have a date here, so uh, let's say that is an en entry dot date, which actually in my case is a local date time. So it doesn't look very nicely if I just say dot two string if I just print this. So what I um, can have, I can have a formatter to format this, but I don't want to have some overly con uh, complex Java code uh, in my template. And also, I don't really want to put this into my domain entity because um, that is the actual type. That is the type that makes sense, local date time. But I don't want to include a string just for the formatting, just for the sake of presentation. So what I can do, I can include what is it called a template extension. So this is a static method that accepts um, a type, in my case, my entry, and then it somewhat extends the type in the template where I can say entry dot formatted date. And this is a static method that's annotated with template extension or where the class is annotated uh, here. And then I can uh, just say entry um, date formatted date in my case. And then it gives me a nicely formatted date because it extends the entry and it will invoke this static method instead, which is, I think, a very nice way to just separate this data, this domain from the presentation logic here, which should reside in the template somewhat. But I also don't want to write it into my HTML code here that would um, just clutter up uh, this code so I can nicely extract it into a template um, template extension. So I think that's a, a very nice uh, way to do that. What is also interesting, there are a few uh, more, um, there's a few more syntactical sugar available. For example, I can say if I have some uh, invalid, um, some unknown um, field, I can use the so called um, Elvis operator. So Elvis operator, because if you tilt your head, it looks like uh, um, Elvis hairstyle, um, and say, well, this or uh, hello, or also it works if I say invalid or hello. Uh, in the latter case, it will just um, say, well, hello, hello, or um, hello world, uh, to just display something when it's not available. It's also quite handy if I say, well, if I have invalid, and then just trying to access something that doesn't exist. Um, in my case, it doesn't fail uh, with a null point exception or something, it would just uh, print not found or um, a default here. And I don't get an error here in my case. So it's um, already quite powerful, I would say, uh, to write these templates uh, with our Qt templating engine and then render them either to use HTML, either in what I did, uh, Jack's REST integration, or just plainly somewhere in our code. It also integrates uh, with email, um, email templates that I can send and then just um, have them rendered in, in this format. Um, you can have a look at this documentation here, which is um, which includes quite a lot of things. And in general, I think it's just uh, quite interesting that it already comes um, with quite some powerful features. So if you know about, you know, how to do web application development, um, at least from my perspective, uh, I don't miss anything uh, here in this template um, engine, although it's right now still in experimental mode. And it also integrates uh, with the native compilation of Corpus. So you can also compile that down to a native executable, and it will work with your templating approach. Thanks for watching.